Hello again, friends. This is Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. And today we're going to be making these little ephemera folders from envelopes. Now I'm gonna be making the envelopes, but you could certainly do this same thing with envelopes that you have around. So let me just show you one here. So we're going to be making this little folio. You can see that these are the two envelopes and then I've just added a little fabric spine here. And then they have little flap holders so that you can keep ephemera pieces inside here. And you could even keep some little bits if you wanted to. I have just some, um, some burlap swatches and some tags. But once you put your flaps in our little flap holders here, it keeps it very secure. So this would be a perfect way to travel with your ephemera if you would like to. So let's go ahead and get started and make this ephemera holder with two envelopes. Okay, the supplies that we're gonna need for this project are the base papers, which are going to be that I'm using um, a heavier cardstock. Um, this is because I want it to be sturdy from the bottom. So this is going to be the base for my envelopes and it's, um, it's two-sided, but really just one-sided. So the cardstock patterns, this is gonna be the inside of the envelope. And then I just have two regular scrapbook papers. So these are not um, cardstock in any way, they're just regular papers. Um, so these are gonna be the outside of the envelope. So I have two of those as well. Now I'm going to be making my own envelopes, which is why I'm using paper. But if you had some sturdy envelopes around that you would want to just either cover or just use as is, you could certainly do that as well. So I'm going to be using those four papers for my envelopes. And then for the, to keep the flap secure. I'm going to be using my um, small crop -a dial here with some brads. This is just going to be punch holes and some um, brads. These are, uh, I don't know, they're just, I don't even know what size they are, maybe half inch brads or so. I think I'm going to be using those um, for the insides of the envelope to do that. I'm probably gonna be using my scissors to trim things up. I might be using this craft knife, knife to trim things up as I go. Um, I'm definitely gonna be using my uh, scoreboard here. This is how I'm gonna be making the envelopes. And then also my regular cutter that I use for you know cutting everyday things. Um, I'm gonna be using this black distress ink. I think that would be fun with some of the outside um, patterns that I've picked out here. Um, and then also a piece of fabric. So this is going to be our, what's gonna create our spine um, on the outside. So I'm gonna be using that as well. And I'm probably gonna be using some stamps. So I have these um, Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz collection, just to dress up this uh, muslin scrap a little bit. If you have some patterned, pa or patterned fabric that you would wanna use, you could certainly do that as well. And then, excuse me, I'll probably also embellish the front just a little bit, just to make it look nice. You can do that in whatever way that you want. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut my four papers down and we're going to score these for four different envelopes, even though we're gonna only end up with two. Now I'm gonna be making an A7 size envelope, which ends up being approximately five and a quarter inches by seven and a half inches. So if you wanna do a different size, you can certainly do that. You just need four scored um, envelopes the same size. So to do a, an A7 envelope, um, because my scoreboard has a little envelope cutter, it tells me to start with a paper that's 10 by 10 inches. So I'm just going to cut all four papers down to 10 by 10. Okay, and I'm keeping my off cuts because these are nice sizes to do some different things with, but I will be using some of the cardstock to make the um, flap holder on the inside. So that's definitely why I want to hang on to those. So these I'll probably just put aside for another use for now. And then what we're going to, use, to do is create our envelopes. 
So now I'm using this scoreboard here and it actually has a um, envelope template that you can use for this. Um, so I'm just gonna show you how to do this. We're gonna be doing the A7 envelope. That's the standard size. We're starting with our 10 by 10 papers and then we're going to make score lines as we turn the paper at three and a quarter inches and four and a quarter inches. So I'll show you how it's done one time. And then you can um, see if you have one of these boards, you can see how to do it. So all you do is you put your template right in the zero corner of your scoreboard and you take your score. Now it comes with, um, it comes with a score. This one does, but I don't like the way it use uh, it. It does it. Sometimes it actually, um, rips my paper. So I'm using one of these scores um, that I have here. So I like the ball end much better. I know it's not going to rip my paper. Um, so I'm gonna start with one of my cardstock pieces. And then what you do is you line up one corner of your square with the edge, the zero corner here, and of this template that we've put in. So of this triangle. So you can see my paper does go beyond there and that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we have this corner lined up here. We have this straight edge against the edge of my template. My first line is going to be at three and a quarter inches. So on the template, you just go up to three and a quarter. You find that score line and you make your first score at three and a quarter inches. Then all you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate the square to the very next corner. And once you do that, at the very next corner. You're gonna make your next mark at four and a quarter inches. So once again, find that score line there and make that score at four and a quarter. Turn again to the next corner, line it up, and then we're gonna go back to the three and a quarter score. And then we're gonna make our last rotation to do our last corner lined up with our template. And we're gonna do that one at four and a quarter. So once you get done that, and this might be hard to see on this paper, I hope maybe the back here is a little bit easier to see, but you can see that my score lines overlap at each middle of the square or close to middle of the square. So before we do any folding, what you need to do is you need to cut out those little notches there so that they don't overlap each other. And when I cut them out, because when you score, it makes um, a line of a certain width. It's not, you know, sort of a zero width line. I'm going to cut off the entire fold or the, the entire score line there. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go right up as close as I can, making sure the fold is cut off of both of those sides. And then I'm just going to go around and do the same thing for each of these notches. Okay, my notches are all cut out. I can do some folding if I want to. I want this side to be the inside of my envelope because boy, that's a really busy, busy um, pattern, isn't it? But I like it anyway. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna fold in the sides, which are the smaller edges. So the smaller ones we're going to fold in and then I'm gonna fold up one of the long edges to make the bottom. And then the last one will be the top. And if you notice, like I'm noticing here, I missed a little of the line. You can see I might have a bend there. So I'm just gonna go back and make sure I cut that all the way off. So you really wanna make sure you have that whole line cut off so that you don't, um, when you're folding, you don't have any overlaps there that would cause the envelope to crease or not fold correctly. You don't want anything in the way there. So there is our envelope, our starter envelope. So now the, the next thing I'm going to do is I do want to, I mean, you could leave this flap, the bottom flap with the point there if you wanted to, but I like to, to take that off. So um, what I've done is I've measured down about one and an eighth inch from that top tip there, and that's what I'm gonna cut off. So I have this template that I had already done from another one. If you were, um, you know, doing your first one and don't have a template like I do, you could just line your, um, your bottom piece up with your 
on your cutter here. And you'd have to just be sure you've got your line straight. So you wanna be sure you're, one, you have one fold line straight on your cutter. And then you can take this to one and an eighth, which would be kind of right in between here. And then go ahead and make that cut. So that's pretty good there. That's basically all I did the first time when I did this. And then you can see you kind of have a, ni a nicer line for this envelope to go down. So when you're putting things in and out, you're not you know, getting stuck by that point there. So that's how we create the envelope. Actually, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and make the other three envelopes and I will be right back. Okay, I finished marking and folding my cardstock envelopes. And for the other ones, for my outside pages, I didn't fold them yet because we're actually going to use these to cover the outside and to do this in a way that I think makes it look nicer and is a little bit easier, we're actually gonna be cutting these apart. So each piece will end up going on each piece of our envelope. Um, but I wanted to have it all marked so that I knew you know, how much I needed to cut off for each spot. So that's why these are not folded um, or anything. Now, the other thing that I like to do, which is entirely optional, is I'm gonna use a little corner rounder here. And for my fold that comes over the top, so my flap for the top, I'm just gonna make a little nice little rounded edge there. And like I said, you can either use a corner rounder to do this, or you could, you know, use a, a quarter and, you know, make a mark or something like that on there if you would like to have a round edge on yours. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover everything. So to do the covers, now I've decided like which, um, which cover I want matched with each inside. So I think I'm gonna do this one with this one and this one with this one, or maybe this one with this one and this one. Yep, I think I'm gonna do that better. <laughs> okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take our cutter and I'm gonna cut this apart. And once again, when I cut this apart, I want to really cut off the score lines I've made. So I don't want them on the pieces at all. So when I line them up to cut them off here, actually I think it's easier to start with a small edge, I'm really going to make sure that that score line is to the right of my blade so that there's no scoring on this piece here. And so I will have to go around and fix the scores all over when I'm done to do the back piece. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to do my best to line these up. And I can tell you that white paper is hard to see <laughs> where the score line is, but you could definitely go over this with a pencil or something as well you know, to kind of make sure um, you were getting all of the score line off of the, each piece there. Okay, so almost done here. Let me just finish this up. Okay, so we have our four pieces that you can see are going to go. Of course, I have to corner around that, but this is how we're going to line this um, envelope. So I have those four pieces ready to go. Now for this one, because I want to use this for my you know, front or back piece there, I wanna be sure the score lines are cut off of here as well. So this is where I'm going to just use my, um, my ruler and a craft knife. You can use your cutter if you want to. Um, my blade is not the best right now, and so it's easier for me to be sure I don't rip the paper um, by just taking it off this way. So um, I'm hopefully going to see that some of my cuts were a little bit crooked, so I'm hoping that I'll have a nice rectangle, a true rectangle when I'm done. 
So let's see what we can do here. And once again, I'm just going around to each side, making sure I'm very close to that score line, but cutting it all the way off so that my um, rectangle doesn't have any lines on it when we go to add it to our envelope. And I'm also trying to use my score lines on my board here to make sure I have a pretty good rectangle when we're done here. Okay, so now this piece is done as well. And you can see, here's all my little score lines that I made um, that I don't want to be included <laughs> on our piece. So now, once I've done that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to distress ink all of these pieces. And then I'm also going to distress around the whole outside edge, especially since I'm using this um, black soot distress ink. Um, these cut lines have made some white edges that I kind of want to try to cover up. So I'm just gonna go around the whole envelope with my distress ink here. Okay, and before I distress these, I am just going to try to match up my pieces because I may need to do a little bit of trimming. And if I do trimming, I'm gonna have to re-distress everything all over again. So I'm just going to put each piece on the envelope and you can see this one looks pretty good, except on this side, I have it looks like I have a little tiny bit of overlap there. So I'm just going to eyeball this and take off just a teeny little bit there in the hopes that this will line up much better. And I don't mind that I, you know, have a little bit of a border here. You could do it so that you have a bigger border, you know, however you wanna do it is fine. So I'm gonna go all the way around. And um, since I haven't cut like this one off yet, I will need to do that as well. So I'm gonna use the template that I used um, that I actually ended up cutting off of this piece to cut off my triangle here. So I have that lined up pretty well. And we'll cut that off. And now I'm just going to make sure the sides um, fit as well. And I think I might put this piece of paper down because it's hard to see with my black background, just to make sure I'm not over the edge on anything. And this looks pretty good. Actually, I might just cut down, uh, looks like this side here needs to be cut down just a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here just a teeny bit. And then I'm going to take my ruler and cut that side piece just a little bit. Let's see if I can line this up. make sure it fits a little bit better. And that looks a little better. Still over a little bit on this side for some reason. So I'm gonna chop that off there. So this, you just keep doing this to make sure that all of your pieces actually match um, your envelope for when we actually cover it. So this is the bottom piece. This one is going to need, my top piece is gonna need a rounded edge to match my rounded edge up here. And that one actually looks pretty good. So I don't think I need to do anything with that one. And then the last one is my right side. Let's see, I think I did that one already. And that one too looks like maybe just these edges need to be taken off a little bit. Okay, now that that's all done, I'm gonna put this back over here. 
I'm going to take my pieces. Oops, I forgot to do one. Forgot to match up my front just to make sure since I cut off all the um, score lines, this should be pretty perfect and it is. So I think we're good with that. And now I'm just going to take all the pieces and give them just a tiny bit of distress right around the edges there so that they kind of have a little sooty look on them. All right, everything's distressed and we're ready to start covering. So I'm just going to take my pieces and um, I'm gonna glue them right down to each piece of my envelope. So I'm using my Uhu glue stick for this. I'm just gonna try to cover this as best as I can. And then I'm just going to add my piece down. And hopefully it won't be crooked <laughs> like I just put it on a little bit. Okay, and then these I have to try to remember which one was which and hopefully they both fit pretty good. Actually they do. I'm just give them a little switch to be sure I measured right for both here. That one looks pretty good there. That one looks good here. I think that's how I'll do it. Actually, I don't want to put this on my gluey back here, so I'm just going to turn that over. And I like to glue it down from the corner first and then down to the line. That's just a personal preference. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up all these pieces. Okay, I just had to mention <laughs> when I was putting the glue on, I ripped one of these side pieces, but I just went ahead and did it and, you know, put it right on anyway. This is one of the um, corner sides, so it is going to show, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. So it's a little, you know, distressed looking. And then I also just wanted to mention that for the last piece, instead of using my glue stick for this, um, because it's going to be one of the covers, I'm going to use my art glitter glue. Um, I think it just holds paper a little bit better. And I want to be sure that it's nice and secure since it's going to be on the outside. And I'm sure, you know, I'll be handling it, opening and closing this thing all the time. And so I wanna be sure that it's on there nice and secure. So that's why I'm using this glue just for this piece. Okay, one envelope done. So you can see, I love how that looks. So that's gonna be our one of our covers, our back or our front, I'm not sure exactly which yet. But now I'm just gonna do the exact same thing with my other envelope. I'm gonna cut this piece apart, cutting all the score lines off, and then I'm going to cover each piece on this envelope on the outside um, after I distress everything, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, envelopes are all covered and not glued together because we're gonna do our flap fastener next and it's easier to attach it if the envelope is not glued together. So to make that, what I'm gonna do is pull out those pieces of cardstock that I had left over from when I cut down my envelopes and I'm going to cut um, two pieces, one from each of the colors of cardstock and I'm gonna cut them, whoops, 
I can grab my cutter. I'm gonna cut them at a size of three inches by five eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna cut this down to three inches and then I'm going to cut a very small five eighths inch piece. So this is all that you have. So I'm gonna do that again on here, three by five eighths for my flap holders. Okay, and then we can put these aside for use um, someplace else or sometime else too. Okay, so now um, if you are not using the same size envelopes that I'm using, this is how I measured that. So what I did was I just took my ruler, let me grab my ruler here, and I determined where I wanted the top of my um, flap to go. So I just kind of eyeballed here you know, where it was so that it wouldn't, you know, I don't want my brads to go off the ends here. I just kind of wanted it to be right on there. So then I sort of centered my ruler at one number here and kind of figured, okay, if I go one and a half inches out this way and one and a half inches out this way, that'll give me a nice flap to cover this whole thing and keep it down so that I can tuck it in. And that's all I did. So once I did that, then I knew I wanted it, you know, I want the bottom of my flap of my envelope to stick out the bottom here. And then you can see I have plenty of space on each side to add my brads. So that's how I did that there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my crocodile. This is my little travel or hand crocodile, I guess. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark on each one of these, I'm just gonna center my five eighths on my board here and I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch and put two little dots there because that's where my holes are going to go. So I'm not sure, let me see if I can, I'll just do these real quick and then I will show you kind of where they are because that's where our brads are gonna go in. So you can see I have a dot on each side in the middle, about a quarter of an inch in. So that, I'm gonna go ahead and punch those holes so you can really get an idea of what I'm doing. And I'm gonna use the 1 8 inch hole punch on both sides. And then you can see when I put this down here, I'll have my flap cover in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually mark where those holes are on my envelope so that we can put our brads in. Now I am going to, as I'm looking at this here, I am going to just try to be sure that it's the flap um, holder here is kind of centered on here before I make my marks. Okay, so I have my two marks there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create my holes in each side with my 1 8 inch hole maker. Ooh. Okay, and then I can take the brads that I'm going to use. And I think I have kind of some dark ones, which I thought would look nice since I'm kind of using um, whoop, sort of a black my black distress ink there. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to distress my flap before I put it on. And I may even add a little to the top of this so that it kind of matches the inside, or I'm sorry, the cover papers a little bit. So I'm just gonna very lightly add a little distress on the outside there. And then I'm just gonna add my brads so that they're ready to go. Oops, I guess I should try to open them a little bit. And when I open them, I am gonna try to have the ends of the brads um, maybe be caught in with the envelope when I glue it. So you can see, I took my brads and kind of angled the ends to a sort of 
be parallel to the edge of the envelope so that when I fold this over, um, hopefully they may not be quite in there, but they'll be close to being glued into the envelope. So now after you've done that, we are ready to glue this envelope together. And I think this one I may use, I think I'm gonna use my, um, my glitter glue again since we've been using that. And to glue this together, all I'm going to do is for about a quarter of an inch along the bottom edge of one of the side flaps, and then on the bottom flap, about a quarter of an edge all the way, quarter of an inch all the way up to the flat portion there. You don't wanna glue across the flat portion because there is no, they don't touch, the envelope sides don't touch in the middle, so we don't wanna glue our bottom flap to the middle of our envelope. So now once I do that, I'm going to just hold this in place until that glue catches for a minute. I'm gonna make sure I didn't glue myself down, which I did not. And then you can see we have a nice little place to tuck in our envelope and keep it together. So I love how that looks. So I am going to go ahead and do the other envelope as well. And then we'll come back and we'll put the whole thing together as our little booklet when we come right back. Okay, our envelopes are all together and you could use them just like this if you wanted to. But I did want to have a little booklet. I love having spaces the, to tuck things in, things that I fussy cut and things like that. So we are going to make this into a little folio. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put these two together so that the flaps open outwards. So um, they're gonna open like this and then the booklet will be connected down the middle. So that's how we're going to connect that and we're going to use this piece of muslin to do that. So before we attach that, I'm going to add a little bit of stamping onto this plain muslin um, just because it is so plain. I thought it would be nice to have something on here and I love that you can use um, stamps to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this um, Stampers Anonymous ledger script stamp and I'm just going to kind of pick an area that I think looks nice for this and I'm going to use some archival jet black ink and ink up the area that I want it to be on and then carefully turn it over and lay it as flat as I can and I'm going to start at the top I'm going to have to do two stamps and then hopefully this will give us a nice impression and it wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it to be, but that's okay. Let me see if I can, I don't know if it's cause my ink maybe is not quite as good. Well, that looks a little bit better. I wonder if maybe, maybe I'll try and do the other side since that didn't work as quite as well as I wanted it to. I'm gonna try and do this again and get a little more ink on here. I think because I was maybe rubbing it around, that might be why it didn't work as well the first time there. That looks better. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use this other side as the bottom part. There we go, that's what I wanted. All right, I'll just try and get some of the ink off there so I don't get more ink on my fingers, which, I mean, that's just pretty much how I roll around in life with messy fingers. <laughs> I'm sure you can relate. Okay, so now 
what we're going to do is we're going to decide which one of our envelopes we want to be the front cover and which one we want to be the back cover. So I, I really like both of these. Um, I think the piece that I'm going to use for my front cover is going to be um, this little guy here, this little turtle. And so I'm just gonna see maybe which one I like it on better. And I think I like it on the polka dot. So I'm gonna have the polka dot be my front cover. And I'm going to take my muslin here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda, right, <laughs> see if I can figure out what I'm doing here. What I wanna do is I wanna just sort of tack glue this down. And I am gonna add a little bit of a stitch to this to make sure that it stays in place. So if you're not comfortable um, stitching through this, you know, the cardstock and everything that we have here, you could certainly just do um, glue but I want to be sure that I have, I'm trying to make sure my flaps are folding outward and I wanna be sure that I have um, this nice and secure. So I am gonna leave a little bit of a gap here, only about maybe, um, I don't know, a little less than an eighth of an inch or maybe an eighth of an inch, something like that, just so it has room to fold. And I'm gonna do one side at a time just to be sure that I have things in place. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue right down there. And once again, this is just a tack to hold it in place until I stitch. But I'm going to leave the other piece there so that when I put this down, I know that it's centered. Now, I didn't mention it, but my piece of muslin I tore um, to fit and it is about eight inches tall. I wanted it, my envelope is about seven and a half and I wanted it to come off of the end because I like that look. So I did cut it about eight inches tall so that it would overflow. And then I did it about an inch wide so that it had, you know, almost a half an inch on each side to really um, hold it together. Okay, so now I've glued one side down and so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna do a little straight stitch right along the edge um, of the fabric right there. Now it will cut off some of your envelope and that's okay. You could do it you know, towards the lower edge if you wanted to or whatever, but because this is a nice big envelope, I'm gonna put the stitch close, closer to the edge of this um, fabric there to hold it in place. So I'll be right back and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and here we go. You can see it's just about a quarter of an inch in there um, on the envelope. A little bit crooked, I see, but may, I think maybe my fabric might have been crooked. And then I'm gonna just do the same thing. I'm going to, this is the way I want it to end up. I'm just gonna flip everything over so that I can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna add my glue to my bottom just for a tack so that it stays in place as I take it over to um, the sewing machine and I'm going to give myself that quarter of an inch. We'll hold that down there for just a minute to let it uh, stick, and I will try to find the top of my glue. Who knows where I put it? Oh my goodness, I hate when I lose that thing. I had the beads and things on it, so it was easy to find, but they broke off, and now <laughs> I can't find my little pin all the time. <laughs> but I need to put those beads back on so it's easier to find. Okay, so now that's on and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna run a stitch right down from this side. This is gonna be my top side since this is the outside right down the, the middle there. So I'll be right back. All right, second stitch done. So now I know that that um, fabric is in place. I'm gonna trim my um, ends just a little here. Um, this one, because the fabric is frayed, I think it has plenty of little ends there, but you could certainly leave these long if you like that look as well. And the other thing is, if you don't want the stitching showing on the inside, you could glue some more fabric to the inside here, um, right along, you know, this edge. Same, same size fabric as out here. You could just glue it down right there because that won't be in the way of anything of your envelopes. Um, you know, if you don't want to. Okay, so here it is already, except for my cover. And for my cover, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this little guy out here. 
and I'm gonna add a backer to it. So when I cut this out, I'm gonna cut this piece just maybe a quarter of an inch bigger than what I've cut out here, glue them together, and then we'll put that down. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. Okay, you can see I have my little card here mounted on my paper and I'm once again going to use my glitter glue to put this to the front and certainly you could embellish your cover any way that you wanted to. So you could add some collage here, you could just add a label so that you know, you know what you're storing in there. Um, you know, there's certainly many, many ways to decorate the front of a folio but I am just going to keep it simple so that I can start using it right away. There you have it, friends, a nice little ephemera folder made from some envelopes where you can keep all sorts of goodies. And these flaps that open outward are a great way to keep things nice and secure. If you're traveling with this or something, you could put this into a journal just as is. You could use this just as a little ephemera folio, folio excuse me, to keep all your things together. Or you could even give this as a gift. This would make a nice gift to put cards or note cards into, or even some stationery. If you have someone who likes to write, this would be a great stationery holder. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, friends. I hope that your week is wonderful. You have a great week. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.